Hi, my name is Steve Woolway, and I'm the Business Development Manager for Trelleborg Marine Systems in Melbourne, Australia. I have worked in the shipping industry for over 30 years in areas ranging from ship design to shoreside infrastructure to development. Today I'll be presenting a comprehensive approach to FLNG docking and mooring systems. Feel free to ask me any questions during the webinar via our LinkedIn page. You can find the link on the registration page and in the webinar description. Today I'll be specifically focusing on nearshore and onshore docking and mooring system applications. These applications are being highlighted because most of the current projects in development or execution are near, nearshore, onshore FSRUs, and we have also found these types of projects present unique difficulties from a systems integration point of view. We have found that shipbuilders primarily focus on FSRU ship-to-ship -ship mooring hardware, whereas the civil EPC responsible for the jetty only concentrate on their design brief, which is typically limited to the civil engineering and construction activities associated with the mooring structure. This means that neither shipbuilder nor civil contractor is considering the overall systems integration requirements. With this in mind, it is critical that a third party needs to consider the complete docking and mooring systems operation and functionality. It is important to note that the docking and mooring system consists of mechanical, instrumentation, control and monitoring subsystems, which all need to function together to assure a safe and efficient docking application. In the following slides, I will consider each of these subsystems in more detail. Operations for the FSRU and the LNG carrier is essential when the LNG carrier's mooring is shared by both the FSRU and the jetty. The physical system architecture also influences the transmission of docking and mooring system data. This needs to be coordinated with care to ensure system efficiency and resilience. Consideration of hazardous versus non-hazardous areas on the jetty and FSRU has a direct impact on field devices, equipment, and machinery selection, which affects cost and, more importantly, safety. The location of radio and GPS transmitters needs to comply with hazardous zoning, as well as avoidance of reception shadows. Critical berthing aids, such as the display board, must be sighted so the line of sight of the LNG carrier's deck officers is unimpaired throughout all phases of docking and undocking. Unimpaired service access needs to be carefully considered in order to assure ease of routine maintenance and repair of all equipment. As you can see, without a comprehensive approach to the docking and mooring system, there is a serious risk of integration issues developing between the FSRU and the LNG carrier and the jetty. Here is an example of a typical mooring arrangement showing an LNG carrier being moored to both the FSRU and the jetty. The coordination of the quick release hooks is an important design aspect, closely followed by load monitoring functionality and the control of the emergency release. Statutory compliance is another crucial consideration, as there is a gap between traditional maritime regulators and on shoreside engineering advisory bodies. The vessel side of the project is traditionally regulated by the relevant Marine Classification Society, Flag and Port State, and the International Maritime Organization. This is important to understand, as CLASS has a prescriptive approach when it comes to design and fitness for purpose of key elements of the ship's mooring system. The jetty design, on the other hand, is influenced more by industry groups that provide design recommendations and operational guidelines. The following images represent four different docking and mooring system configurations. The first image illustrates the West Java nearshore regas mooring structure with a semi-permanently moored Golar Kerner FSRU, which is moored side by side to the transient LNG carrier. Next, we can see the Guanabara Bay regas facility located in Brazil, which employs a finger jetty arrangement with the FSRU and LNG carrier moored adjacently to each other. Thirdly, we have the original Herc LNG Madon FSRU, which required a side-by-side -side mooring arrangement between the FSRU and the LNG carrier. Finally, the last image shows the Dubai LNG's FSRU semi-permanently moored to the conventional LNG jetty, 
with the FSRU moored side by side with the LNG carrier. Different berthing configurations have an impact on the operations of the docking and mooring solutions, meaning that each proposed application needs to be considered carefully. Understanding operational requirements is critical in achieving a safe and efficient system. Another issue to be addressed is where the centralized control and monitoring will be located. The jetty, the FSRU, a remote location, or possibly a combination of the three. I will now take you through design issues that should be considered early on in the project, beginning with the mechanical mooring system elements. Firstly, I will discuss quick release hooks, which are vital to the functionality of the mooring system. The civil EPC and shipbuilder are typically uncoordinated when specifying the sizing of the hooks. This can lead to inconsistencies between safe working load of the quick release hooks selected for the ship to ship mooring and the jetty based hooks. A further problem here is the difference between statutory bodies that provide general design guidelines and recommendations to the jetty designer versus marine classification societies who specify detailed design guidelines to the shipbuilder and ship designer. These differences can prove problematic when the LNG carrier mooring is shared by both the FSRU and the jetty. Due to the semi-permanent nature of the FSRU, the hooks aren't often cycled or exercised, meaning special attention must be directed to maintenance to ensure they are fully functional when they are required to operate. Similarly, chain stoppers may be used on the FSRU to terminate the jetty mooring lines, which means mooring line load monitoring becomes critical. Traditional mooring applications rely on the mooring winch brake to protect the mooring lines from overload. When semi-permanent mooring of the FSRU, the vessel crew must be constantly aware of the mooring system load so adjustments can proactively be made to prevent under or overloading of the mooring system. Other mechanical aspects which should be considered are Firstly, the reduced mooring line length associated with side-by-side -side mooring affects the shock absorption capabilities of the system and these potentially higher shock loads incurred by environmental conditions must be considered when designing the quick release hook. Secondly, the mooring lines used for the ship-to-ship -ship mooring may be provided by the visiting LNG carrier. This may result in the lines being of unknown condition or capacity, which is clearly a risk. And finally, the pneumatic fenders utilized to protect the FSRU as well as the LNG carrier and the associated deployment and retrieval equipment must be considered as part of the docking and mooring solution. The next design challenge to consider is the instrumentation, control, and monitoring system requirements. First, we must understand what information is required by the various parties and the importance of easy access to information. So the question is, who requires the monitoring system data? Firstly, plant operators on the FSRU and ashore may require plant and machinery operational and process data. Terminal operators both floating ashore will also require berthing aids data, met ocean, and mooring system load monitoring information. Finally, the LNG carrier's deck officers need to monitor and maintain the mooring system during cargo operations, so access to mooring load data is essential. The next element to consider is the control philosophy of the overall system. Points to consider should include where will cargo operations be controlled from and a clear understanding of mooring system routine and emergency release. We must also take into account the location of the equipment based on hazardous areas and also the exposure to the elements. The various subsystems that constitute the overall monitoring system need to be considered together so that all information can be assessed via a single workstation in multiple locations. These subsystems typically consist of Med Ocean and Environmental, the Docking Aid System, Mooring System Remote Release and Load Monitoring, and the interface with Ship Shore Link, also known as the SSL. It is vital to ensure that the SSL functionality is consistent across all vessels and coordination of the emergency shutdown operation must be carefully considered. It might be preferable to centralize on the FSRU, the jetty, or elsewhere. In the case of side-by-side -side moored configurations, it's also important to consider how the LNG carrier will interact with the jetty, with the FSRU located between the two. 
Overall control of the system also needs careful consideration. Operationally, this should take into account both routine and emergency communications, as well as emergency shutdown functionality. Here at Trelleborg Marine Systems Melbourne, our primary focus is providing safe and efficient docking and mooring solutions. We do this by taking a comprehensive approach and considering all aspects of the docking and mooring arrangement. For over 30 years, we have been involved with onshore and offshore LNG jetty docking and mooring, which has resulted in our participation in more than 50% of all LNG jetties worldwide. Furthermore, it should also be noted that Trelleborg Marine Systems are the world leaders in the supply of quick-release hooks to both onshore and offshore applications. We take complete design control with our expert mechanical, structural, software, and instrumentation engineers all working in-house with a seamless handover to our service team upon project completion. In closing, I would like to highlight some recent FSRU and regas terminal projects in which we provided comprehensive docking and mooring system solutions. The Escobar regasification terminal with the transient accelerate FSRU in Argentina. The Dubai regasification terminal, including the FSRU Golar Freeze, which is the first semi-permanently moored FSRU in the world. The Livorno Offshore LNG Terminal, which represents the first offshore open water turret moored application utilizing the FSRU Golar Frost. The West Java Nearshore LNG Jetty, which is the first regas project in Asia utilizing the FSRU Golar Conor. We are also currently supporting HERC with their new build FSRUs at HHI in Korea, with the first and second FSRU, FSRUs destined for Indonesia and Eastern Europe. There are two additional vessels which will also be built. For all of these projects, we provided both the jetty and the ship-to-ship -ship mooring system elements comprising quick release hooks, mooring load monitoring and remote release systems, GPS berthing aids, and for most projects, fenders with an associated deployment system. Thanks for watching the webinar. If you have any questions, please get in touch via our Marine Insights LinkedIn group. The link is available on the screen now.